Okay, since the news is just becoming so much at such a fast pace, I thought I would separate out my weekly videos so I can just give you the news in one and any tools or updates to tools that I have been using in another video. Tell me what you think in the comments. I'm continuing to adjust everything for you to make sure it is centered on what you want in the way that you want it. My name is Ben Silverman, and if you're new to the channel, I'm purely focused on making AI available and understandable to everyone. It is something everyone will have to learn at some point, and I'm hoping to help you in an easy to digest way. I have a newsletter that I put out once every week, keeping you up to date on all of the latest news and tools coming out. I also have an AI toolbox that is really focused on allowing you all to explore these things at your own pace. Now, if you find any of this useful, please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. It'll really help me out. All right. Adobe has recently added Firefly to their Lightroom software. How often have you had something caught in a picture that you took that you didn't want to be there? Well, now Lightroom has the magic eraser tool to remove some of those unwanted items. Now, if you look right here, um, this is what magic eraser does. You're able to basically just draw on the things you don't want and then it just takes it out. Uh, for instance, take a look at this, uh, boom, Drew, the size, gone, the wall is there. Now look at this right here. Now imagine you didn't want that photo bomber in your picture. You literally just take him out. You just wipe it clean. You erase him from your image. There's so many reasons why I would do that. If you look right here, you can even blur out the backgrounds. You could do it in subtle. You could do it in a shape. You could do it any way you like, but it just really gives you so much more power and so much more control. Now that's available in the Creative Cloud Suite that you can get from Adobe. And I suggest you check it out if you have the opportunity. I know it's already in Photoshop, your generative expand, your generative fill, and they're just gonna really put it, be putting it into everything that they have in the way that you need it so it meets you where you're at. Now Google DeepMind has revealed info on their major Sora competitor and it looks absolutely amazing. I signed up for the waitlist but I have not been accepted yet so I won't be able to experiment with you uh, until I am actually accepted but the second I am I will but just take a look at this. Uh, here it is. It's Google Veo. So this is all stuff that was generated completely from text prompts. Now, if you come down here, let's take a look at this. The prompt here is a lone cowboy rides his horse across an open plain at a beautiful sunset, soft light, warm colors. That's all what that was put in and this is exactly what you got. It's pretty incredible. Here, let me show you a few more. This prompt right here is a fast tracking shot down a suburban residential street lined with trees, daytime with a clear blue sky, saturated colors, high contrast. Pretty impressive. This is an extreme close up of chicken and green pepper kebabs grilling on a barbecue with flames, shallow focus and light smoke, vivid colors. This one is a time lapse of the Northern Lights dancing across the Arctic sky, stars twinkling snow covered landscape. An aerial of a lighthouse standing tall on a rocky cliff, its beacon cutting through the early dawn waves crash against the rocks below. It's pretty cool. These are pretty impressive if you, if you ask me. Time lapse of a common sun Sunflower opening, dark background, extreme close-up of a shallow depth of field of a puddle in a street reflecting a busy futuristic Tokyo city. Drone shot along the Hawaii jungle coastline sunny day. Drone shot along the Hawaii jungle coastline sunny day, kayaks in the water. That's all that was, that's pretty impressive. This is the, the same prompt except this one has kayaks in the water and it's literally just edited the video for you. This one says prompt, alpacas wearing knit wool sweaters, graffiti background, sunglasses, alpacas dancing to the beat. A fast tracking shot through a bustling dystopian sprawl with bright neon signs, flying cars, and mist night. A fast tracking shot through a futuristic dystopian. Okay, let's check this out. The cars leave the tunnel back into the real world Hong Kong. So basically what they're doing is they're separating the edit by uh, different prompts, it looks like. Cool. This is now the second one. A fast tracking shot through a futuristic dystopian sprawl with bright neon signs, starships in the sky, night volumetric lighting. A neon hologram of a car driving at a top speed, speed of light, cinematic, incredible details, volumetric lighting. 
The car leads to the tunnel back into the real world Hong Kong City. This is, so basically they, they prompted this entire sequence. This is a panning shot of the scene of mountain landscape, the camera slowly revealing snow ca uh, cap peaks. Moody shot of Central European. Okay, this is cool. So this is kind of how it how it does it. It talks about this is the text prompt. It breaks it down into the different keywords that you're asking for. This is the image prompt, so you could load an image. Um, both of these are basically combined to the embedded prompt that it was that it's giving to the diffusion model. This is the compressed the compressed video that it's going to be drawing from because everything when it comes to these generated videos is coming from uh, diffusion. Uh, so let's let's look at this and then the compressed video is made it decodes and then it gives you the output another research paper came out this week called lega which stands for layered gaussian avatars for animatable clothing out of china it aims at dressing and animating garments across characters let's take a look at this this is the research paper the idea is that you can actually use this shirt and it will be able to adjust to the motions of your avatar. And the method that they're talking about in this research paper right here is these are the poses, and then these drive the, um, the avatars, and then you're able to actually layer these fittings on and render, it says rendering supervision for RGB mask and normals. So basically like the effects would do it, right? So here, let's take a look at this. So it shows the reference video, the inner layer of like the body and how it takes it. So it's basically tracking that. It's talking about the outer layer, which is the clothes. And it's trying to take the clothes and put it, uh, the outer layer matched with the inner layer. And then this is depending on what the actual outfit becomes. Uh, that's pretty, that's pretty interesting. And using different types of um, body types. And look, the, the shirt adjusts with the movement. There, there isn't a whole lot more about this right now, but I'm sure we are getting closer to trying this since a number of other companies have been showcasing these types of tools now. Toon 3D is a research paper showing how you can see cartoons from a new perspective. Their question is if humans can perceive 3D worlds from images that aren't 3D, why can't machines? Their paper talks about viewing a hand-drawn image, masking out the objects and predicting depth. Now look at this. <clears throat> so this is the research paper. I'm gonna leave all the links in the description. But what it has is hand-drawn images. It tries to map out through masks and give it predicted depth. And then uh, basically being able to uh, create a point cloud from that. This is a lot of VFX terms and then cameras. And then the idea is, is once you have that and once you've created the depth, given it that volume, you should be able to move your camera around inside of it. Now let's check this out right here. This is what it's talking about. It's doing exactly what I just said. It took the picture, it predicted depth, it turned the camera over to the other side of the house and basically created a new 2D image. Here's another one. That's cool. And again, you see this is more of the Gaussian splatting type of method, but it really is, this is looks like Family Guy. And this was all made from one image, one 2D image. It just literally lets you recreate another image. Now this is for cartoon reconstruction. Basically flying your camera through something that, <laughs> that never existed. And the method, it shows you right here, it talks about uh, the estimation, uh, how you can align it, and then how you can recreate it. This is like the two 3D, Toon 3D labeler. It's showing the depth maps, takes out the characters. Again, all of these are being used today separately. But now people are starting to figure out how you can combine all of this together. 
which is pretty impressive, right? And it warps the, in order to view from a different angle. It looks a little rough now, but this is so impressive. This is the worst it will ever be. So if you figure out that they figured out how to do this now, what are they gonna do if they're spending all of their time trying to make it better? Kino AI is a tool that will immensely help your media storage and retrieval. Basically, it seems like it takes your media and breaks down absolutely everything inside of it into keywords. So you can search for absolutely anything in a piece of footage and it will come up. As an editor, I know how hard it can be to find the footage sometimes that you're looking for, or even to have to, to tag all of the footage, which usually right now an assistant editor would do. This is an incredibly time-saving tool that I think will, will be huge, right? Uh, let's take a look at this. Like a flamingo feeding its chick. It's a great moment. I can actually send it to my video editor because I was already working on a project in another window. And you click here. Now a marker has been placed in the video that that points to. And I can now easily drag that very specific moment into my pre-existing time. We'll be supporting other video editors soon. That uh, is pretty much just a small fraction of what you can do with Kino right now. We've been running a private beta and we're actually now ready to share it. With black and white footage, all the beautiful frames that exist over there. It just becomes so easy to get get your footage. Now there's another company called Strata doing something very similar and he's documenting his journey on YouTube as well. Michael Cilioni and his brother who was a Netflix executive, they really created a company that is focused on bringing AI tools into the filmmaking process. And it's really interesting to watch and I'm gonna leave a link of that in the description as well. So everybody is just trying to figure out how to make the filmmaking process easier. It's not it's not about making it more complex. It's not a way about taking people away from doing doing jobs. It's very much about saying it's like how can I make this process like labeling labeling tags? It's like somebody should not be spending weeks before they actually have everything labeled in order to even start editing and doing the real work on a project. It's all pretty interesting. Logo Motion is a research paper out of Columbia University and by Adobe Research that is aiming at 2D motion animation via text prompts. This doesn't feel too dissimilar to what Apple Keyframer had released a while ago. They're probably both using the same idea, but here, let's take a look at this. If you see right here at the top, you can see that all of these are animating. Um, these are all animated logos. Now look down here, it really kind of goes through its process of being able to input this logo. You break it out. So basically what they're doing is, is they're segmenting everything out. They're taking, I need that piece, this, this other circle piece, the orange. Then they're saying GPT-4 will get the caption, they'll analyze and they'll suggest. And then basically break this all down into a prompt. And then you say the design concept, add a slight bouncing effect as the cat settles into the final position to give it a sense of weight and liveliness and then it goes to the local image since it's already got everything text uh since it's already got everything separated out and then this is implementing so this is the code of implementation and then this is the output frames of the animation code so that's what it does um that's pretty cool it makes a lot of sense it's what the animation process is uh, and then it talks about how uh, really grounded all the visually, um, the, basically it keeps going into to all the specifics of what, what it's going to do uh, and how it repairs, for instance, editing and being able to get other options. Uh, um, all of it to say like, it's pretty neat. This one is a little bit more close to home because I used to have a motion design company and this is literally what we did. It will be very interesting to see how the two combined. Uh, but I really do think it's about taste making. It's about having the thoughts of what to do, not just the fact saying it's like animate this. You need to know how to do it, what to do. So it, it is really, really interesting. All this means is that the 2D animation game is getting to be much more interesting over the next few months. Now, these are some of the research papers I've looked at. Uh, I will be jumping into tools, getting my hands dirty with some of these things, and then I want to share and show with you in uh, more hands-on videos than the news in the future. So keep watching. I'm going to be doing a lot more of these. Talk soon.